Hey, how's it going? And today I just wanted to do an update to a video I did about adding and removing a user interface in Verse Code. And I wanted to say a couple things. First, that there's different ways to do things in Verse. And second, and probably most important, is that the language is changing. This language has only been around for about a year or two years now. As more and more people are using it and as the language is evolving, we're all kind of learning better ways and new ways of doing things. So if my tutorials change over time, what I'm trying to do is update my tutorials as I go so that you're kind of seeing the latest and greatest way of doing things, or at least what I think is the latest and greatest way of doing things. So this particular code I'm sharing with you today has actually taken, has actually evolved over the last several months. What I wanted to show you now was what I think is the simplest and most efficient way of adding and removing a player widget. So. As always, I try to have a very simple example, a working example. So all I have is a trigger device in the scene, a player spawner, and then my verse device. And what this looks like is if we go into the game, I go over this trigger device, and a message pops up here on the screen. It's clickable. I, my player can't move. And so if I click the, the button, then I can go on. And then as many times as I come back, the message will pop up. Now this is actually a really nice button because it's very loud and it pops from the screen. So this is actually not a bad way of getting a simple message to your player like turn right, turn left, or whatever. In fact, I think I'm going to start using this as my main mode of communication because this is such a lightweight and kind of cool way of getting a message up on the screen. It's just a really, really looks good and it's very efficient. So And it stops the player, too, So until the button's clicked. There's a lot of advantages in using it. So anyway, what this looks like in the code, we'll just jump in here. So we have our modules here, and here's our creative device. We have an at editable for our trigger. Then we have our button message text, which is of the, the message type. And then we have our button message. This is the most important thing, is we initialize our overlay up here at the class level. This is very important. We set it as a variable. We're going to call it current UI, and it's an overlay. If this was a canvas, we would set it to canvas. Now, what's great about doing this is if we set this at the class level, then we can toggle its visibility off and on. We can remove it and add it very easily if it's instantiated at this level as a variable. So then down here, we create a my trigger, my which references my trigger up here create a triggered event, we subscribe to initialize the UI here. So what we do here is we search for, because the triggered event uses an option of agent type, we have to have this in our parameter here. We check to see if there's an agent in there. If there is, then we call it valid agent. Here we cast from the agent type to the player type. And here with our player type, we can get our player UI and assign that to player UI. So this is what our widget sits upon, this player UI. Then once we have our UI, we can call a method we built here called build UI, and we send the player UI in here. Once we have the player UI, we make a call to set our widgets here, and we can have a whole bunch of more slots in here. I just have one slot for convenience. And then it returns the UI, which is an overlay. So our overlay now gets assigned to new UI. Then what we do is we get our player UI, we add our widget, we attach our new UI, and then we, we also reference a player UI slot, and we turn the input mode to all, meaning that the player can't move until they click the button. So this freezes them. They can move their mouse, but they can't physically move their character. And then what we do is we set the new UI back to our current UI. So we update our current UI with this. And then down here, we just create, we reference our, again our button message. We set the text on it here. And then we create a new event down here called on click message. We subscribe to it. We call it on click. It can be called anything you want to call it that makes sense. On click makes sense to me. And then what we do is its parameter is a widget message type, which is what this button message sends when it's clicked. So when it comes in, we just get the player UI of our player assign it to the player UI. Once we have the player UI, then we simply go remove widget and reference our current UI. And this is, as far as I can tell, as far as I know right now, 
this would be the cleanest and simplest way of adding and removing uh, player UI. So anyway, I hope you found it helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.